Hello, and welcome to your appointment. <laughs> I'm sorry it's been a while. The year has been so tumultuous, but I think so long as we have support and love, we can make it through whatever the world wants to throw at us. It is refreshing to see you again. <laughs> Though the world seems cold sometimes, spring and summer always come along to melt the ice and make the world new again. I find that our minds can have similar dips and valleys, seasons of exuberance and seasons of doldrum. But I think so long as we remember that the world will thaw in the end of it, we will be alright. <laughs> I want to take you somewhere where there is celebration and warmth. A town where everyone is bustling and bursting to celebrate what is new, things to come, things that have been, things that will be. All of this is celebrated in the town of Turnwheel. Would you like to go? <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Well, we'll start with calming your mind. Take a deep breath in and out. Find a steady rhythm in Holding the breath, feeling it throughout the body, and out. There you go. Find a rhythm that is comfortable for you, and begin to slowly inhale, hold, and exhale. <laughs> You're doing wonderfully. Wonderfully, wonderfully, wonderfully. Now, I know it's been a while, but if I have your permission, I would like to wrap my coils around you. I've missed holding you. It's all right? Wonderful. Keep breathing as I slither forward and wrap the tip of my tail around your ankles. A smooth, cool, firm hold. You know, reptiles are cold-blooded, so my grip might be slightly refreshing in the summer weather, slowly acclimating to your body temperature until we've both reached equilibrium. Feel me coiling, curling, higher and higher, up past your calves in a smooth motion that slowly spirals up along your form. Your thighs are softly buried in my bulk as I coil further up along, the tip of my tail coming around your hip bone to gently flow over your tummy. I pause here to gently stroke. I've missed you, <laughs> and I get the feeling you missed me too. <laughs> My touch continues up, up, up along your body. Your hands are now gently pinned to your sides as you feel my scales slowly flowing over the backs of them, reaching up and up until I reach just under your chest. Here I give a little squeeze, a loving hug to a dear friend. With that, I continue upwards further. Up past your forearms, gently cradling, coiling, winding around you. I flow upward still, shifting, slithering, as I come to your shoulders. The tip of my tail pours across your collarbone, an insistent, reminding weight of my care. I softly and slowly wrap around your throat. You can still breathe perfectly well, but my weight is a reminder of my company. Remember to breathe. You are comfortable here, with me. There are no worries from the outside world. There is simply the two of us. Now, I want you to imagine a light as you breathe. A light that situates itself just above your head. I want you to move that light, left, right, with nothing but your mind, a gentle, soft, imagined glow flitting about like a fairy above your head. I want you to place this light in front of you, a soft focus. If distracting thoughts come, simply examine them and let them pass and focus on this created light in your mind. I want you to make it spin, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. 
until you begin to hear the sounds of a water wheel gently spinning in its creek. Once you have that in your mind, we can go to Turnwheel. Turnwheel is a town situated inside an ever-moving, gigantic water wheel. It sits in the middle of a cozy swamp. Cattail plants gently sway in the breeze as Turnwheel turns onward and onward and onward. I slither forward and smile at you as we come to our destination. Someone stands before us, or perhaps some frog. This is the mayor of Turnwheel. His name is Amphim, and he waves jovially to see us. He looks the perfect picture of a mayor, from his top hat, to his clean suit, to his perfectly cared for and shiny skin. His throat inflates in happiness to see a new visitor. In turn wheel, all are welcome, on all days, but particularly this day, on the centennial of the town's founding, they are more welcome than ever. The water wheel has an entrance every couple hundred feet. It turns and allows those who wish to step on to the turning city and enjoy its sights, sounds, and smells. He hops up to us and shakes your hand. His skin is not clammy, but it is cool to the touch and has suckers at the tips that gently grip at your wrist before he lets you go. He says, come, come, there are many things to see in Turnwheel, and if you wish to get started before the big fireworks show, then you will have to start. The main access point for the various entrances to Turnwheel is inside of the old mill house. He takes us inside, and you see the hustle and bustle of Turnwheel firsthand. There are cricket folk, milling about inside the mill house. They are preparing strange black powders. The world smells like a firecracker inside this realm. Inside this room. Each cricket has four arms, and all of them are busy, preparing and packing down fireworks. There are various chemical powders laid around the inside of the mill house, one marked red, green, blue, purple, a whole rainbow of possibilities. Each labeled bag is a chemical that will change the color of the resulting fire within the work. You can hear the sound of cricket song all around the mill house. They gently chirp as they work, a song you cannot understand but you can feel as Amphim leads us through. Several of the cricket folk wave their extra hands when they are available and smile to see you as we head towards the entrance to turn wheel. We wait for an entrance to come around as we observe the various cricket workers around the mill house. Eventually, an entrance comes and Amphim walks through as though there is nothing strange at all. I gently bump you with my coils and say that there is no worry of falling within the giant wheel. We come forwards and through the entrance and suddenly you are assaulted by a million sounds. The world here is a giant wheel you can look up and see houses, shops, and more spinning above your head as we spin with them. Your first instinct is to lean against something as we begin to curve upwards, but you find a magic keeps the gravity centered. No matter how the wheels turn, nothing falls. Amphim smiles and said that the spell that causes this was cast a hundred years ago today, giving all the residents of the swamp somewhere to stay, laugh, love, and live. He would love to give you a full tour, but he has much preparations to do for the celebration, so he gives you a crisp salute and hops off into Turnwheel proper, leaving you in my capable hands to lead the tour. I begin to slither with no worry of falling as we turn ever roundwards. As we walk, I tell you that this water wheel was once an abandoned eyesore. Many of them who lived out in the swamps amid its various dangers often avoided it, until a witch of some sort came by and made it her home. When she finally did move on to greener pastures, she cast a spell that would make this place a refuge for all those who live in the swamp, and the celebration is to honor her kindness. Because of this, I decide to take you to see some of her favorite things. The first is a bakery 
playing possum bakery. The sign has a comical possum laying on their side, pretending to be asleep with little Z's above their head. We walk inside, and within, there are various possum bakers kneading loaves of bread with hands and tail alike. The air smells yeasty and warm, the smell of a bakery, the smell of baking. Turnwheel is famous for its milk bread, a special bread which contains milk powder. You can see various possums working giant spoons over a hot pan. The dough must be heated before it can be baked into the soft, fluffy loaves that the town is known for. Pillow-like and cottony, you can see several of the finished loaves in the window as various possums work to make more. There is a line of swamp critters, gators, dragonflies, other possums, and more, all waiting to get a loaf of this famous playing possum bread. Beyond the possums, there are several bovid folk, one of whom, in a teal dress, seems to be leading the charge on the bread making. I wave to her and she waves back, putting her work to an assistant's hand and coming over to say hello. She is enormous. Nine feet tall, her hooves gently strike the floor and rumble through your feet. She smiles and wiggles her ears, cowbell earrings ringing slightly as she does so. She says that her name is Mimdi. She comes from the town of Stallwork and is here every year for the big celebration. She walks you over to a big, warm tub where possum and bovid folk alike are working the milk powder into the dough and making sure it is warm to the right consistency before baking. She says that this is something called a tazong. The heated dough mixture makes sure that the bread is as fluffy and soft as the residents of Turnwheel have come to expect. The dough looks soft and supple as it all comes together. She smiles to see it. She delights in showing other people the wonders of baking. She says that seeing your wonderment at the Tazong reminds her of her first Turnwheel Festival, several years ago. She says that she delighted in the bread so much that she had to ask if she could help. And she was so good at it that they ask her back every year to lead the charge. More than a thousand loaves of milk bread will leave this bakery today to make people's evenings as they watch the fireworks. She says that the earring she wears, those twin cowbells, were a gift from Amphim, the mayor, in thanks for her steadfast work. There is a baking contest in Turnwheel every year. It was the first year she entered as well, and she won. After that, she was no longer allowed in the contest, because sadly, there are no professionals. Still, even without the competition, she enjoys the smiles and compliments she gets as she leads the people around her towards one singular goal, creating something delicious and delightful for all residents of Turnwheel. She goes on about the magic of the fireworks and the magic of the wheel, how at first it made her slightly wobbly to stand on such, but ever since she got used to it, she can hardly imagine anything else. She says that sometimes when she goes back to stall work, she can still feel the turning of the wheel, like a tide of the ocean after one has spent time at the beach, gently washing over her as she attempts to sleep. A possum calls her name and her ears flick with those ringing cowbells as she excuses herself and says that we should enjoy the tour further. She recommends the opera house as the next place to visit and I smile. Great minds think alike. It was the next location I was going to show you. Before she leaves, she presses a soft parcel into your hands. It feels cushiony in your grip, like a giant marshmallow, one of the famous mill loaves all your own. We slither out from the bakery, the smell of bread trailing behind us, as we go on to the opera house. The opera house of Turnwheel is pretty hard to miss. It is the one construction in the entire wooden town that is made completely of glass. It shimmers in the light, catching it like a true jewel of Turnwheel. More possum folk, augmented by several foxes, mill around the opera house, readying for the big centennial show. The leader of the opera house is a massive possum named Tonality. As we come over, he waves to you and tells you to come close, beckoning with his tail. As he greets us, he gives you a warm hug that almost vanishes you against his chest. 
You can feel his pouch, though you wonder what might be inside it, vague bulges pressing against your side, as he hugs you. He welcomes you with a broad, fanged smile, and says he is always so pleased when people take an interest in the opera house. His voice is colored with what sounds like a Southern American accent, warm and rich like wood or honey. He takes you in, leading you in the crook of his tail like a vaudeville cane as we step inside the opera house. Within, you can hear various animals tuning their instruments, making sure that all is ready for the centennial. As we walk, we can see posters of various creatures, though there seems to be a lack of possums until we reach tonality. Tonality perks are the question you ask, why there are so few possums on the wall. He says that it was thought for a while that fine music wasn't meant for possums, that they were creatures of trash and filth, vermin. He frowns at the word. But he says that now that he is the runner of the opera house, he can choose whoever he wants to play whatever he likes. He can play multiple instruments, including some with his tail. It gives you a little squeeze, as he says as much. He says that his ethos is that anyone, anywhere, can play music. As he says as much, his tail goes from a crooked curl to a full wrap around your front as he lifts you up to his eyes. He asks you if you enjoy music, and as you tell him what sort of music you like, he smiles broadly and says maybe they'll have to try some of those tunes sometime. He also asks if you have any requests of the orchestra. He laughs at your reply and says they will try their best. He leads us around the opera house to several rooms showing you banjos, trombones, harpsichords, violas, pianos, and instruments you've never seen of strange construction and stranger performance. Tonality takes great pride in the variety of instruments available at the Turnwheel Opera House. He says if they can't play it here, they can't play it anywhere. <laughs> he laughs at his own joke, his tail gently vibrating around you before he finally sits you down. As he does, the tip of my tail gently caresses your ankle, apparently missing you as someone to wrap up. Still, there is no time for coilings just yet. Tonality has to prepare the performance, so he moseys off, his tail giving your back a pat as he picks up several instruments, stuffs them inside his pouch, and returns to the workings of Turnwheel's opera. As we leave the opera house, we head out into Turnwheel's main thoroughfare, an ever-turning, rounded way that various animals walk. Here you can see mice running around on all corners, hanging flags, handing out sparklers, and more. Each mouse wears a number on their back, one through possibly one million, as they seem to be everywhere. One of the mice notices you and comes over to offer you a sparkler. He says that his name is Favor, and that he is one of the hundreds of mice that make sure the town is perfectly decorated, painted, pretty, for the centennial. He enjoys things like that, making a space look tidy, clean, and nice. He and his many, many brothers and sisters work together to make sure that every little thing is perfect. It seems as though everyone has a role in the centennial, the entirety of Turnwheel, above and below you, to your sides and beyond, is like an ant farm of activity laid out before you. The sun is starting to set. You look out to the side and notice that you are upside down as the giant wheel slowly turns, riding you once again. It becomes hard to track where is up and where is down. There is only Turnwheel. Favor hands you a little pennant flag that has Amphim's face on it. Happy Centennial, it reads in cheery letters. He says that you can keep it, along with your sparkler. He also advises that we head to the seating ground if we want to get good seats for the fireworks. We thank him for his kindness, and I slither and you walk forwards to a long green patch along the wheel's circumference. Many animals are already there, setting up lawn chairs and waving their little pennant flags. Children play with their sparklers, though it is not quite dark enough yet to use them. In the middle of it all, a giant gator in an apron advises the mice here, there, and everywhere. He smiles with a million teeth to see us, 
and bounds over, his belly bobbling in front of him as he comes to greet you and say hello. He pulls you into a great hug. Unlike Tonality's hug, the cold-blooded gator's hug chases a bit of the warmth from your body from the summer sun. He sits you down with an apology. He often gets too enthusiastic upon greeting new people. His name is Grohl, and this gator is the people manager of Turnwheel. He makes sure that everyone is doing what they need to be. Without someone in charge of it all, people might do the same job twice, or worse, not do the job at all. He gently throws his weight around, a belly or hip bump here or there, to direct the mice where they should be and what needs decorating. He also makes contact with Amphim, Mimdi, Tonality, and others, making sure that everything is right on track for the best centennial ever, for they all hope there will be many, many more. He says that he has been in this capacity in some way or another since he was a Gatorling. He enjoys making sure that people are where they're supposed to be, and that things are done in the most tidy and proper manner. A lot of people are slightly intimidated by his massive teeth, but years and years of being the people manager of Turnwheel have made it so few people don't smile just to see him or feel him coming. The massive gator gives you a gift, a necklace with a tooth on it. When you ask him if it's his, he laughs and says he has many, many to spare. The sun continues to set, almost falling beyond the upside down horizon as we turn over and over again in a gentle, endless circle, just like the gentle, endless bustle of Turnwheel's populace. Grohl says that we should find our seats. He gently gives you a bump of encouragement with his massive, segmented belly as he gently herds us towards two of the best seats atop a natural hill growing within the magic of Turnwheel's wheel. He says that he wants to make sure you, a first-timer, has one of the best seats to one of the best fireworks shows in all the universe. He gives you one last hug, smothering you momentarily in gator tummy, before he has to hurry off to make sure that everything is perfect before the big show. You and I, now alone, a seat for you and my coils for me. My tail gently curls up the side of your chair and into your lap a familiar, hefty weight as it curls around to gently cradle you and stroke over your tummy as we wait for the show to start. You can see the ever-turning wheel below and above you, a simple, ever-present, infinite loop of turn wheel. The first firework almost catches us by surprise, an upward whew and a <laughs> The color is a deep blue in the shape of a cattail, one of the swamp's main signifiers. Another shoots upwards, and again, another shank, the smiling face of Amphim, who walks down to the big podium as the orchestra begins to play a gentle tune to celebrate Turnwheel's centennial. You can see that the cricket's work was not in vain as fireworks begin to fill the sky. Amphim at his podium clears his great throat, inflating it slightly before he goes on a long, gentle speech about how each and every person made Turnwheel possible, about how the witch's kindness gave them somewhere to stay and somewhere to live, for they are two different things. He loves that everything is in its place and that everyone is in their place. The, the javality begins as various people light their sparklers and hold them to the sky as fireworks of all colors fill the diaspora lighting and bursting in the middle of the wheel as though it were some firework all its own. I smile to you as we watch the festivities and gently lean close. I whisper and ask if you have had a good time and at your nodding, I gently squeeze you. Thank you so much for coming to turn wheel with me. This is a special place and its special celebration is made all the more precious with you here, with me. Thank you.